Exciting times! God of War Ragnarok is right around the corner. Let me take you through a recap of everything you need to know for the story so far. A couple of disclaimers, it should go without saying that this will contain spoilers of everything that happened up to God of War 2018, but will not contain spoilers of Ragnarok. I've also decided to give you a very brief overview, including the story of the original trilogy, giving only details that help us better understand the events of the reboot. Check out the timestamps below if you want to skip to the current story and are not interested in that much background. Our story begins with Kratos, Spartan, badass, demigod, and son of Zeus. He was out in battle doing Spartan things, killing and chilling, ended up picking a fight with the barbarians, getting his ass kicked and almost killed in battle. Before he was struck with the final killing blow, he called out to Ares, the god of war at the time, and pledged his soul in exchange for victory in this losing battle. Ares Ares agreed, struck down Kratos' enemies, granted him with powers, and gave him the Blades of Chaos. Kratos then went on a murderous rampage, to put it lightly. The only connection to his last shred of humanity was through his wife and daughter. Ares knew this and saw it as a weakness, so he concocted a plan to have them killed by none other than Kratos himself, as if it wasn't already f***ed up enough. He sent Kratos and his army to a village where his family was staying, and Kratos inadvertently, unknowingly, and accidentally murderized them both. For some reason, an old witch lady was there, and after seeing what happened, she cursed him to always remember this atrocity by coating his skin with the ashes of his dead family, hence his very pale complexion. Eef. This, along with many other occurrences where he gets used as a pawn, roots his hatred towards the gods. He then sets off on a path of vengeance, killing a lot of gods to include Ares, allowing Kratos to become the god of war himself, and his father Zeus, continuing the cycle of patricide. He ends up destroying Olympus and wiping out 90% of the Greek population and then decides maybe it's time to leave. He hops on a boat and somehow this boat leads him out of one mythology and into another. This is where our story continues slash begins in the reboot God of War 2018. In the opening scene of God of War, we see an older, wiser Kratos preparing a funeral for his recently departed second wife. He no longer possesses the blades of chaos, instead he wields an axe that is later revealed to have been hers. Here we meet his son Atreus, half god through Kratos and half giant through his mother Faye. Neither Kratos nor Atreus know of Faye's giantness yet, this is actually something they don't find out until the end of the game, but it is a crucial piece of information since it explains why everything that happens, happens. Although we only ever get to meet unalived Faye, she plays a critical part of the story as she is the one who sets them off on their journey together. You see, her last wish for them was to travel to the highest peak in the realms and spread her ashes. Easier said than done, since the highest peak in the realms just happens to exist in Jodenheim, a realm that has been sealed off by the giants and is currently inaccessible. Let me take a moment here to introduce some characters into the mix. A god named Odin and a goddess named Freya. Odin is described as a power-hungry, ruthless, barbaric, and heartless all-father, leader of the realms. He had many wives and many sons, two in particular that play a big role in this game are Freya and her son Baldor. Freya left Odin because he was an insufferable asshole or something like that. Due to being heartbroken and a controlling narcissist, he curses Freya to never be able to leave Milgard or go back to her home, living a life of isolation. Back to our dynamic duo. Before setting off on their journey, they get a visit from an unwanted psychopath. That's right, Baldor, son of Odin and Freya, invincible, cruel, and extremely disturbed. He resents his mother for taking away the ability for him to feel anything, which she did out of fear of ever having to watch him suffer. Odin had sent Baldor in search of a giant living in the woods. He felt threatened by the presence of a giant, his sworn enemies in the realms. When Kratos answers the door, Baldor mistakes Kratos for this giant that he's looking for, understandably, because Kratos is a big mother and picks a fight. Kratos, confused as to why this small man has come to slap him repeatedly, believed Baldor was sent because he knew of Kratos' past as a god. After a quick beating, Kratos believes that he has killed Baldor, unaware of his inability to die, and decides that it is not safe to stay at home, so they hurry on out of there. Throughout their journey, we find not only a story developing of their adventures, but a development of their relationship as father and son. It is clear from the beginning that Kratos was never an involved parent. Atreus only knows everything he knows from his mother's teachings. Kratos is keeping the fact that he is a god a secret from his son, since he is afraid that his son will resent him for his bloody past. I don't know how Atreus didn't figure it out, to be honest with you, since the men can pick up an entire tree like a paper f straw. They meet two dwarves on their journey by the names of Sindri and Brock, brothers who at first could not stand each other, but later on reconnect and work together once again. These guys upgrade weapons and armor throughout the game and are both wonderful additions to the entire experience. Anyway, as they continue, they come across Freya and a new character named Mimir. Freya and Atreus immediately take a liking to each other. Their first meeting is quite brief, but it is here where she puts a marking on Kratos and Atreus to hide them from being sensed by anyone who may be looking for them. Freya also leads Kratos and Atreus to the Bifrost 
Trust, a tool that allows them to travel between realms. While climbing to what they thought was the highest peak in the realms, the two overhear a conversation between Magni and Madi, sons of Thor, and Mimir, the smartest man in the realms. They question Mimir on the whereabouts of a large tattooed man and a small boy, of course getting nowhere. When they leave, Kratos and Atreus reveal themselves to the man stuck in the tree. Mimir learns of their journey and is the one who reveals to them that the highest peak in the realm is in Jotunheim, which has been locked for ever. The only giant left in Milgard who knows how to access Jotunheim is the World Serpent, and the only man left alive who knows the ancient language that can communicate with the serpent is Mimir. Of course, he cannot free himself from his imprisonment, so the only logical option is to cut his head off and have Freya revive what's left of him, I guess. This is where they find out that Freya is a goddess, and Kratos immediately hated her for it. After some angry remarks, he leaves, seemingly never wanting to return. Mimir becomes a wonderful narrator for the rest of the game as a head hanging off of Kratos' utility belt. When we first meet him, he only has one glowing eye. It is revealed to us later that the eyes are crystals of knowledge of some sort and that Odin, being as paranoid of anything that may threaten his power as he is, ripped out one of Mimir's eyes, hence taking that knowledge and hiding it in Thor's statue. At some point, the world serpent actually ate the statue because uh, he hated the sight of Thor in the morning, something like that. Don't forget about the eaten statue. Kratos and Atreus eventually run into Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They break off in a fight which the two brothers are repeatedly making your mom jokes at Atreus. I I wish I was making this up. This angers Atreus, causing him to lose his temper and make dumb decisions. Kratos ends up killing one of the brothers, leaving the other to run away in fear. Sometime after, Atreus starts coughing up blood and eventually passes out, falling ill. In a panic, Kratos brings him back to Freya. Freya requests the heart of some dude from Halheim for some reason in order to cure Atreus. The creatures that Kratos will fight in Helheim cannot be hurt by the Frost Axe, which is why he has to bring out the old Blades of Chaos, weapons that he swore to never use again, which is stupid because those things are dope and should always be used. He goes off, kills the thing, butchers the heart out, brings it back. Freya is able to save him, but warns Kratos that his illness is due to Atreus not knowing of his true nature, a nature which is killing him from the inside. When the kid wakes up, Kratos lets him in on the secret that he is part god and tries to explain to him that with great power comes great responsibility. Atreus hears none of that and now decides to act like a self-entitled asswipe with the I'm better than everyone attitude. This only lasts for a bit as Kratos later yells some sense into him, but not before he ends up killing Madi against Kratos' wishes out of rage. At some point in their adventure, they find out they need Mimir's second eye to open the gate to Jotunheim. They learn this from Tyr, using eyes similar to Mimir's to open a gate. Not gonna get too far into Tyr because he was only ever mentioned through hieroglyphs. The second eye is hidden in the statue, which was actually made by Brock and Sindri, which, if you remember, is in the serpent's stomach. By now, the pair have found out that Freya is Baldur's mother and kinda don't dig her crazy lady vibes anymore. They venture into the snake's stomach, get Mimir's second eye back, and get violently ejected out because Baldur beat the shit out of this poor snake. There they have their final encounter with Baldur. To understand how they came about finding Baldur's only weakness, mistletoe, I need to mention the fact that Sindri once gifted Atreus some mistletoe arrows to thank them for saving him from a dragon. Atreus broke the latch to his quiver. They used one of the mistletoe arrows to fix a latch sitting on his chest. The rest of the arrows were condemned and disposed of by Freya because of the nature of their use. When confronted by Baldur in this encounter, he ends up punching the shit out of Atreus in the chest, hitting the mistletoe and thus breaking his invulnerability spell. After a long battle, Baldur is weakened. Kratos tried to show him mercy, but he went on to try and murder his mother Freya, which of course is a big no-no, and so Kratos snaps Baldur's neck. Freya hates Kratos for what he did and says some really mean things to him, to which he responds, okay, whatever, and carries on with his quest. Wrapping up our story here, they finally reach Jotunheim, only to find out that all of the giants are now giant corpses. This is also where Atreus finds out that he is half-giant because of his mother and also that she referred to him as Loki. Here's some cryptic foreshadowing on the wall for your interpretation. That's it, you're all caught up. I hope I was detailed enough to make sense of everything that happened, but not enough to be boring. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Have a wonderful rest of your night, day, afternoon, whatever time it is in your time zone. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.